All right, so our first step is we're gonna pop this hatch. We're gonna get the tools that we need to lower down the spare tire and get that out of our way. Then we're gonna start making our way underneath the vehicle. There's a series of 10 millimeter bolts we need to remove as well as plastic clips. We'll start working those out. Basically removing the bumper is our first general step. So there's a lot within that, but I'll show you step by step how we're gonna accomplish that. All right, so we're underneath. We're gonna start removing these 10 millimeter bolts and plastic clips. There's a couple here in the wheel well and some mud. We're just gonna make our way all the way around this thing all the way to the other wheel well, and you'll just see basically every 10 mil in clip is coming out. We'll also get the trailer wiring pulled out, and we'll start working on our sensors. Okay, now we're back inside the hatch. We're gonna remove these trim panels, and that'll give us access to a couple of bolts and some more clips, and we'll just keep working all of that out and ultimately remove this whole big plastic area. All right, you can see with the trim gone, we've exposed all these 10 millimeter bolts. We're just gonna go ahead and keep removing those and get this plastic worked out. All right, once you get this fender flare pulled back out of the way, it's gonna expose a little plastic clip back up in there. You're gonna have to remove that on each side and then start pulling outward and just working this out all the way across. The wires are still connected. So I have this bench there. We're just gonna kind of pull this apart to where we can reach in there, unplug all the wires, and set it on that bench. All right, so everything kind of comes to this main plug right here. So we're just gonna squeeze that tab and remove that. Ultimately, we're gonna go back on right now um, with the bumper. I just, it's a good idea um, with differing trims that you just make sure that there's no wires beside the vehicle where you're gonna be cutting right here. Once we've verified that, um, this one has the TRD Pro um, fender flare lights. We need to make sure that wiring's out of the way. And once this is unplugged, we'll be able to put this back up cut it and then just let the bottom drop off and then we'll pull all the wiring out of it. So we're getting everything kind of laid out for our cut and our cut, if you have the TRD Pro with this little light in the fender, is gonna go right through that. So we're just gonna remove the two Phillips head screws on the back side and toss this in the trash for right now so we can get our cut complete. Now we're ready for the fun part. Went ahead and wrote down our measurements here and we're gonna be cutting on the bottom side of this tape. Basically, um, this line is our reference here on the fender flare. From that line down, we're five and a quarter. Then we're gonna move to where the tail light is on this flat spot and measure up. We're at nine and three quarter. Again, we're cutting on the bottom of the tape. And then on the back side, we're measuring from the tail light down 10 inches, so just like that. We're gonna go ahead and cut about an eighth of an inch long. We'll end up sanding to that line. We're gonna do these same exact measurements on the other side. All right, so we got everything buzzed off. Now we're gonna remove these blind spot monitors. We're gonna remove this plastic and the plastic up there, as well as this foam piece, and start working our way. Trailer um, plugs coming off. These little brackets are coming off. I'll kind of show you as I do them, but that's kind of a general outline of what we're doing now.
next step is we're gonna cut off this blind spot bracket. Ultimately, we're gonna relocate the blind spots up behind this panel. So we don't need this mount right here. It's gonna get in the way of our bumper. So there's just three spots that it's tack welded back here. So we're gonna bend it out, use this cutoff wheel to kind of get back there and make our cuts, and then discard this piece. We got everything out of our way um, removed that we need to remove. Now I'm just gonna take my sander and just dial up to this tape line. Ultimately, we'll probably sand a little bit more after we test fit the bumper, but I'm just gonna kinda clean this up and get a good, nice line to start with right now. Okay, so next step, we're gonna pop these back off again, and then we're gonna mount our blind spots to our new brackets right behind this piece of plastic in that location on both sides. So we got the cover out of the way, now we're gonna mount up our blind spot monitor to our included bracket. So these are side specific, so the bracket's gonna mount, you can see the three holes here, they're gonna line up with the blind spot monitor. These two um, slots are gonna go underneath this guy here, so we'll have to free up some wire and pop loose these um, retainers, but we're just gonna mount this right underneath these screws with this bracket on top. We're gonna use our included carriage bolts and nine lock nuts to secure the blind spot monitor to this bracket. All right, so we got the blind spot monitor installed. We're gonna repeat that on the other side. As for this ground, this is just a jumper from the frame to the body. So we're just gonna grind the paint right here and use a nut and bolt to attach that in the already drilled hole on the body. Okay, so we're almost ready to get the bumper in place. We just have a few holes that we need to drill out. The holes are already existing. We're just enlarging them a little bit. Um, so this one is good to go, but right next to it, we have this one we'll enlarge. We're gonna enlarge this side, um, not this side of the hole, but this side. This one we'll do top and bottom, and the same over here, top and bottom on this bolt, and just the outside on this one. Moving right along, we're gonna jump over to the cut section of the bumper. We're gonna use a flathead screwdriver to pry out um, the sensors, the wiring, and the little uh, green sensor um, fittings that the sensor clips into. We're gonna ultimately reuse those in the CBI bumper. So we'll get all that out. We'll clean off the old adhesive from the face of these um, sensor buckets, and we'll reapply new that was included in your kit and apply those in the bumper. Okay, these sensors come out pretty easily, but you gotta take these outer little tabs and pull them apart, and then the sensor will pull directly towards you. So that's how to remove these guys. They're all the same, so we don't need to worry about that, but we do need to make sure that we orientate them the same way in the bumper. got our little sensor buckets out of the old bumper. We're gonna attach them in the new one, but we gotta clean off all this old adhesive. Um, little pro tip is 3M makes this eraser that chucks up in a drill, and it works excellent to get all this off. If you don't have access to this, uh, maybe some goof off, goof, excuse me, goof off or something of that nature to get this cleaned up, and then we'll attach the new adhesive and get them in the new bumper.
we need to do one more thing with this piece before we can throw it away. And we're just gonna cut this top side because we're gonna use this to fill the gap between the cargo hatch and the bumper. So we're just gonna cut on this side, all the way across the bottom and up the other side. And we're gonna do the same with this piece here. We're just gonna go across the bottom so this will be able to attach to this so you have a nice clean finished edge on the back of it. So we just have these plastic caps in the frame that we need to pop out to allow the bolt mounting for that front mounting foot on the bumper. So we're gonna do this on both sides. There's a plastic cap on the outside of the frame and on the inside on both sides. So we got everything ready on the vehicle. Now we're just gonna prep the bumper for installation. So we're gonna go ahead and put our sensor wiring in. We're gonna mount the top plate and get our cage nuts installed for the swing arms and then we'll get it on the vehicle. So what I'm doing right now is just taping up uh, with electrical tape this extra plug. This is for the sensor where if you wave your foot, um, it'll raise the lift gate. We don't have provisions in this bumper to maintain that feature, so we're just gonna tape up the connector so it doesn't get corroded and zip tied up out of the way. these up. So this is a 3D printed part that will be sent out with the TRD Pro model. So we're just going to put this piece in and it's just going to fill that super smooth. All right, so we're moving on to the swing arms. Now we're gonna get this arm prepped and ready to go. So I have a wire brush here. We're just gonna clean out the inside really good, lube it with anti-seize. That's very important to use anti-seize on these. And then we're gonna hammer in two bearings in the bottom and one in the top with an oil seal. <laughs>
swing arms are on, now we're gonna go ahead and set them um, at their level. And the trick I use is I take just one of the washers that we have in our kit, and I'll put it over the bump stop so that when we close up the swing arms, um, the swing arm is sitting just a little bit high so this, this washer is in between the two bump stops. And then we wanna torque the arms down to 60 foot-pounds on each bolt. So we'll go ahead and close them up and get everything torqued down.